Hi there, what I want to speak today about in this video clip is the states of matter, solids, liquids and gases. Let's look at a very simple example. We've got ice, we've got water and we've got steam or water vapor. Ice is a solid water a liquid and to all intents and purposes steam a gas. How do you go from steam to water to a gas? The answer is heat it. Heat it. Heat it. How do you go back from steam to a water to ice? Cool it i.e. heat it up, cool it down. I've, that, that sign there means reversible. So what is the difference between a solid liquid and a gas? Chemically, they're all H2O, good old water. Chemically, they're the same, but physically, they're different. So why are they different? The answer is common sense. There's something different about them inside of them. If I took my solid, liquid and gas again, inside of the gas, sorry, inside of the solids, each of those particles or ions molecules are close together they're linked they're joined like if i took in that solid there there's one of these particles it's joined in three dimensions to other particles in the liquid if i took a, a, a liquid and a bucket full of whoop, the wet stuff, of water, and I threw it on the floor. It flows, then stops, which means then that the things inside the liquid are partially joined. I don't smoke, but if I took a cigarette, I'm a bit posh in that, a big Cuban cigar, took a puff of it, blew it out, it travels all over the uh, place so therefore the particles in a vapor or a gas are further apart than moving randomly about and in a liquid let's just say let me go back put more of these particles in and in a liquid the particles are partially linked or joined. Let's go back to the original solids, liquids and gas. I heat my solid, my ice, it changes into a liquid, into a gas. What happens is I apply a means of heat and therefore the molecules or the ions, whatever, they become more and more excitable energetic and the links or joins between them break and you get a change of state. Let's take liquid. The molecules there they are moving about a bit. I give them a bit of heat, a bit of stick. They go silly. They expand and things break or form and the converse applies. As I cool down that gas these excitable Molecules, ions, whatever, they slow down and eventually they form, form some linkage or bonds. And going down from the liquid to the, they slow down and they've got a greater chance of hitting each other and a greater chance of forming links or bonds. I can't find my board rubber. Here we go. Let's look at this in a bit 
more detail. The general case again, solid, liquid, and gas or a vapour. This is my solid, liquid and my vapour or my gas. Heat going that way, cool coming down that way. When things are heated I apply energy and when things cool down I take away energy. When I change from steam to liquid that process gives out energy and when I go from liquid to the solid it gives out energy. The temperature at which a substance melts and changes into a liquid is called the melting point and when a liquid changes into a vapour or a gas it's called the boiling point. Cooling down a gas to a liquid is condensation and changing from a liquid to a solid is occurs at the freezing point. And we now know why it's because in this the particles get further and further apart and here going from the gas to the liquid to the solid they get closer together. So if I took an example hydrogen is a gas at room temperature there he is and I took another example of, say, a solid sodium chloride, NaCl. This consists of ions. It's a solid because the internal arrangement of that sodium chloride, there's lots of them, lots of them sodium chlorides, they must be linked or joined in some way. In fact, I'll be talking about this in the next video clip, it's called ionic bonding and it's in a lattice, a three-dimensional, like that sodium chloride is linked to that sodium chloride, like a grid, like a box, whereas in poor old hydrogen there's not a lot of things linked or joined, that is why it's a gas. The forces between the molecules is extremely small. Well that's about all I want to speak about on this important subject, solids, liquids and acids. For example, if I said what reacts the most, a block of sodium chloride with potassium chloride, the solids, they do not react or combine together because they're in a solid state. Whereas I, if I took something like hydrogen with something else, chlorine gas, they will mix quickly. In the previous video clip I spoke about the halogens. Halogens and I mentioned fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. Fluorine is a gas, chlorine is a gas, bromine is a liquid, iodine is a solid. What does that tell you? It tells us that the particles 
By the way, the particle theory about the structure of matter is not particularly correct because these atoms, these molecules, they sometimes they're not round, they're not the same shape, etc. Fluorine's a gas, gas, liquid, solid. It tells you, therefore, that the particles in fluorine are not linked, they're not joined, there's not a lot of attraction or bonding or linkage, whereas in iodine, it's a solid. And therefore, the particles, what was that word? Particles are linked and joined in some way. Iodine, if I heat it up, there is, I've got my block of iodine, solid, liquid and the gas. I heat up iodine, it goes straight from a solid to a vapour. So it goes, and that is the process of what's called sublimation. It goes straight from a solid to a gas without the intermediate liquid stage, which proves, therefore, that the links or bond in iodine are small. And that concludes what I want to speak about solids, liquids and gases. There's just one more thing I'd like to mention. I've tried to say the solids, liquids and gases, the internal arrangement determines the physical properties. If I took carbon, carbon comes in three types. Diamond, a girl's best friend, extremely hard. Graphite, what they find in pencils and lubricants, and amorphous carbon or charcoal. Chemically, they all consist of carbon. Diamond's carbon, graphite's carbon, amorphous carbon is carbon. The difference is the arrangement of the, those particles. In a diamond, the joined in tetrahedral structures. In graphite, the joined in hexagonal structures. And poor old charcoal or soot, they're not joined at all. But I'm trying to emphasize that the states of matter depend on the particles in which the way they are linked or joined.